Okay, in this section, I'm actually going to talk about several applications, um, but we're going to start with, of, we're going to do applications of exponential log functions, but we're going to start with growth, growth and decay. And so let's look at it this way. If y is a quantity whose rate of change with respect to time is proportional to the quantity present at any time t, then y can be represented in this form y equals y naught e to the kt, where y naught is the initial value. In other words, that's the value of y when t is zero. k is called a constant of proportionality. And then you get exponential growth if k is positive and exponential decay if k is negative. Now, there's other ways this formula might be written. Um, in finance, you might see something like A equals A naught E to the KT. Uh, for populations, you might see P equals P naught E to the KT. Uh, sometimes they just use a constant C this right here. And, um, and you might remember for continuous compounding, we use something like this, amount equals P times E to the KT. Actually, we used R, but that's not that big of a deal. But we used R instead of K for, for their interest rate. Okay, so let me show you how this works. So I'm going to start you out with just a, a problem. Now, a lot of these are just algebra problems now that use exponential functions. So I'm not really going to use much calculus for now. So let's see. Um, you're given this formula that represents the population of a city at times T, where A is the population and T is the time in years. The first question is pretty simple. It just says find the population at the end of five years. Or So you just plug in 5 for t, and then you grab your calculator and you go to town, and hopefully you get what I got, 5,025. Uh, by the way, that 5,000 is the initial population. That's the uh, p naught or a naught or whatever you want to call it. Now, how many years until the population doubles? Well, the initial population is 5,000, so we want to set the population to be double that. So we're going to set the population to 10,000, and we're just going to solve this exponential equation. Now, you know how to do this. Divide both sides by 5,000, and you get 2 on the left equals e to the point 0,001t. Then apply logs to both sides. So apply the natural log to both sides, and you get natural log of 2 equals natural log of this expression. And then it turns out that the natural log of e to a power is just the power. So you get over here, you just get that that's going to be 0.001t. And then to solve for t, divide 0.001 into the natural log of 2. And there's your answer. So it's about, it's a little more than 693 years. So it looks like it's going to take a while. Now your guides for mathematical modeling is basically you use the given information to come up with two sets of conditions. And normally this inclu includes the initial condition of t equals zero and a later condition. That problem I gave you, we didn't have to actually devise the model. So, so in the next ones, we're going to have to devise the model. So we're, we can use the initial condition to solve for that constant k. And, and then um, and, but remember, the value when t equals 0 is the constant, uh, actually I didn't say, it's the constant a naught. Okay, I guess I left that off. It's the constant a naught. Because the amount when t equals 0, if you let t equals 0, you get um, a naught times e to the 0, and e to the 0 is 1, so you just get a naught. So the initial, that a naught or p naught or whatever you're using for that constant, the, uh, the coefficient constant, not the exponent constant, is actually the uh, initial population. And then you're going to use additional conditions to solve for the constant k. And let's see here. Uh, you can read this, freeze the video and read this interesting fact if you want to, but I'm going to go ahead and move on to an example. So here, we, it says, in the year 1900, the population of the city was reported as 12,500. So that's the initial population. And then 20 years later, a new census was taken and found to be 16,000. And then we have some questions to answer here. So let's get with it. So first, we need to create the model. 
So the first thing we know, we know the initial population is 12,500. That's the population for when t was 0. So using uh, p equals p naught e to the kt, I'm going to just say p equals 12,500 e to the kt. Now I need to know what this constant k is. And that's where my second set of conditions comes in. I know that p is 16,000 when t is 20. So let's put that information in. So I put 16,000 in for p. I put 20 in for t. I just wrote the t first this time and the k last. Okay, so now solve this for k. Well, if you divide 12,500 into both sides, on the left, 16,000 divided by 12,500 is 1.28. And on the right, I just have e to the 20k. And now I just take the natural log of both sides. So I have the natural log of 1.28 is equal to the natural log of this. And remember, the natural log of e to a power is just the power. So that's just going to be 20k. And now I just divide 20 into this to get k. And I went ahead and rounded it to four decimal places, and it comes out to 0.1234. So now when you go back to the original model, you go back up here, you put the k in, and you get 0 0.01234 t. And there's a t right there. It's almost hidden. All right, now, um, part B says use the model to predict the population for the year 1950. Well, 1950 is equivalent to t equal 50. So I, I've just plugged 50 into this function and grabbed my calculator and see what it comes out to the nearest whole number. And that's 23,167. And then finally, the third one says estimate when the population will reach 37,500. So just set P equal to 37,500 and solve for T. So now um, to do that, divide 12,500 on both sides and you get 3 on the left. And on the right, you just get e to this 0 0.01234 uh, t. Uh, by the way, that is supposed to be 0 0.01234 there, not just 0 0.1234. Okay, so, um, and then uh, take natural logs of both sides, and you get natural log of 3 on the left, and natural log of e to the, this power on the right, which, you know, that's just going to be the power. And then take natural log of 3 and divide it by 0 0.01234 to get t. And you get about 89 years. So the year would be 1989. This is also can be used in uh, decay of uh, materials, decay of uh, radioactive material. Let's look at, at this example. The half-life of radioactive material is 20 years. The initial amount of 80 kilograms of material is to be disposed. Construct an exponential model that gives the amount of material remaining after t years, and then find how much of the material will remain after 200 years. Well, I'm going to use this model, a equals a naught e to the kt. Okay, well I know the initial amount, a naught, is 80, so I can start with that. And now, I know that, that a equals 40 when t is 20. Why? How do I know that? Because the half-life is 20 years. So in 20 years, half of it's gone. So what's half of 80? 40. So in 20 years, you're only going to have half of 80 left. So if I plug in um, 20 for t, I have to plug in 40 for a. So I get 40 equals 80 e to the 20k. And now divide both sides by 80 and you'll get 0.5. So 0.5 equals e to the 20k, and now I take the natural log of both sides, so I'll get the natural log of 0.5 is equal to the natural log of this, and we know the natural log of e to the 20k is 20k. Now divide by 20, and you get negative 0.03466. And now we have my completed model, and then to answer the next question, just plug 200 in for t, and you get your answer, and it's about 0.078 kilograms theoretically. Now, it never all decays, by the way. Okay, I did these examples in an earlier one. I know I did one like part A, so let's just skip part A. Freeze the video, read this, read the example, work through part A, and then uh, let's just go ahead and just talk about part B. Part B says, how long before the account is worth $10,000? 
Well, so you're going to take this formula up here. We're going to put $10,000 in for the amount. 2,000 is the principal. The rate is 0.075 in decimal, and we're compounding quarterly, so n would be 4, and then the exponent is going to be 4t. Now, I went ahead and figured out 0.075 over 4 is 0.01875. And so, and then um, if you divide both sides by 2,000, that's where the 5 came from. So now I'm going to go ahead and add these together. 1 plus 0.01875 is just that. And now I'm going to take the log of both sides. So if I take the log of both sides, now this time notice that the base is an E, so I can't use that little trick. But what I can do is when I take the log of this, I can bring the 4t down out here. And then, so now if I want to solve for t, I've got to divide the natural log of 5 by 4 and this natural log. Or you could say 4 times this natural log so that I can isolate t. And so if you do that, you get 21.66 years. And then there's a similar example here. Again, you can freeze the video if you want to and do the first part. But basically, I'm going to do this uh, second part. How long will it take to double the $1,000? So put 2,000 in. So that's A. And then P is 1,000, E to the 0.06T. And then divide both sides by 1,000, and you get 2 equals e to the 0.06t. And then you know how to do this. Take logs of both sides, and you get natural log of 2 is 0.06t. Then divide by 0.06 to get your answer. Here's a couple of miscellaneous examples that I've run across. Um, basically, there's a formula for the Richter scale measurement where it's given to equal to a log of x over x naught, where x naught is some sort of constant. So I'm not going to worry too much about that. But basically, in this example, we're given that x, the intensity of this earthquake, is 199,526,000 times x naught. So basically, I'm going to replace x with this, and what's going to happen is the two x naughts are going to cancel so I just get log of this big number. So the Richter scale measurement is just going to be whatever the log of that number is. And you can just use the common log key on your calculator. Okay, here is a pH example. So it says determine the hydronium ion, which is H3O plot positive, of a blood sample that has a pH of 5.41. And, you know, we're basically given this formula here. Okay, so what we need to do is just plug 5.41 in for the pH and then solve for this H3O plus guy. All right, now this negative right here, we really need, need to get rid of that negative because it's over here with what I want to solve for. So multiply both sides by negative 1 and you get negative 5.41. And then this side is positive. Now, this is a base 10, right? So if I wrote this in exponential form, wouldn't I get 10 to the negative 5.41 is equal to this argument here, H3O plus? So in other words, H3O plus has to be whatever 10 raised to the negative 5.41 is. And I, put, I did that on the calculator, and I got a very small number here. So there's your answer. And again, I'm not exactly sure... Uh, you know, I don't work with um, earthquakes or pH, but uh, these formulas popped up in some applications. Now, on this last one, I really do, I'm excited to talk to you about Newton's Law of Cooling. So on the next video, I'm going to finish up this chapter, and I'm going to show you some uh, a cool example using Newton's Law of Cooling.